Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog FarmhouseOnMoon.com. Today I'm going to share with you 10 things that you can make with your sourdough discard. If you've been making and maintaining a sourdough starter, you probably are aware that there is a process where to build up the yeast that is in the starter from the environment and from what is on the grains. It takes a constant supply of flour and water and in order to avoid filling up your entire house during that process, you will have some discard. And a lot of people don't like throwing it away, myself included. Right now, things are crazy and it's really hard to get your hands on flour and so it's even more painful to throw it away. Now, of course, in normal times, when you have normal access to flour, you still might want to use the discard in this way but you can always give it to your chickens. You can put it in your compost. That is a good way to use it and not really waste it, but still you might want to use it. Now, keep in mind that on days one through three-ish, there won't be a whole lot of yeast activity in your sourdough starter, and so the grains won't be long fermented, and if you have any issues tolerating grains, and that's the reason that you're going for sourdough, know that essentially on days one through three-ish, you're gonna have various levels of basically flour and water. Now it might be fermented a bit the further you go, but if you're looking for those benefits, just know that what you're using is flour and water. So you aren't getting those benefits, but you're not throwing it away, which is cool. All right, so there are at least 10, but these are 10 that I've come up with ways that you can use that. Once your starter is established, you won't need to be discarding starter anymore. So this is just something that happens during the building it up process. So you don't have to worry that this is constantly something you have to do. I've heard people say that I hate sourdough because you always have to throw away something and actually you don't. My starter is nine years old now. I haven't thrown away any starter since I started it nine years ago. So that is not necessary. But if you're in that process, or let's say that you have four cups of starter because you were feeding it and then you just didn't wanna make anything for a while, but it was still on your counter, so you kept feeding it, you might not want to feed it four cups of flour and water next time and you need to replace the volume that's in it so it gets properly fed. So then in that case, I guess you are discarding and you can make these recipes. All right, number one, pancakes. Anytime I have a whole bunch of starter in my jar, I will make pancakes because it requires three cups of starter for my family of eight, not Daniel doesn't eat, but seven eaters. I have the recipe on my blog, it's really easy. The recipe calls for two cups of starter, two eggs, a quarter of a cup of coconut oil, two tablespoons of honey, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of baking soda. And you just fry it up on your cast iron skillet. The next one on the list is crepes. Now for this one, you're gonna use a lot more eggs than you are starter. So if you're looking to get rid of a lot of starter, consider making the pancakes. Again, I have the crepes recipe here on my channel and on my blog, so I won't go through all of these recipes, I will just mention them and then I will refer you down in the description box to all of the recipes if you want to actually make them. I have a whole blog post where I share all of these as well. The next one down on the list is waffles, very similar to pancakes. It uses up a whole lot of starter and it's a great way to use discarded starter. Basically, anytime you are trying to think about a recipe that you can use with your sourdough discard, it's something that doesn't require a whole lot of rise because if there's not a whole lot of yeast in there yet, you aren't gonna get a good rice. So day three, you're just not going to be able to make sourdough rolls or sourdough bread, but that's where pancakes and waffles that have other leavening agents, such as baking soda, you can make, or anything that will be flat, like a crepe. The next one on the list is pizza crust. I love making pizza crust. It's the easiest thing ever. All you do is preheat a pizza stone or a cast iron skillet. You have to get it really, really piping hot. That's the key, about 450 degrees. Add some sourdough starter on it, shape it into a circle, add olive oil, salt, pepper, herbs, bake it, and you have a pizza crust. It really is that easy and it's perfect for sourdough discard because you don't need a rise. Now, keep in mind that the sourdough flavor of a mature starter is delicious in a pizza crust, so you might need to work to add a little bit more flavor, a little bit more olive oil, salt, those will be the things that will help with an immature starter. The next on my list is crackers. This is a recipe I just put on my blog, perfect for sourdough discard, also just a great snack to make once your starter's mature, kids love them.
The next is flatbread. I make those just like I make my pizza crust, but I add a lot of herbs. They taste delicious with some cheese or dipped in olive oil. The next one on the list is sourdough skillet. This is one that is so versatile. Basically, you take a whole bunch of meat and vegetables, and then you put that in a cast iron skillet and add on top a mixture of sourdough starter, or in this case, sourdough discard, eggs, baking powder, herbs, a little bit of butter, and then top it with cheese, and it's a one-pot meal. Wonderful for this time. Now, if you like a little bit more direction, I do have a free ebook with five variations on my sourdough skillet. You can get that at farmhouseonboon.com slash sourdough skillet. The next one on the list is sourdough apple pie. This one is just like the sourdough skillet, only instead of putting in the bottom of the cast iron skillet, you do something sweet like apples and cinnamon. The topping is a little bit different because it's more of a sweet thing, so you don't add herbs. I do have the recipe over on the blog and here on my channel. It's amazing to top it with ice cream and you can sub out any fruit in the bottom portion. So if you want to do strawberries coming up soon here because those will be ripe soon or blackberries or peaches when those become ripe, it is a perfect versatile thing that you can use sourdough discard on. The next one on the list is sourdough cookies. Now these do have some additional flour, so not every grain in it is long fermented. You'll take a little bit of sourdough starter, add some flour, eggs, other ingredients like that to make the cookies, but you still can use up some of your sourdough discard on that. On that same note, sourdough biscuits also, you will have an additional flour, so it won't all be long fermented, but it's another great way to use your discard. Also, if you want to make more of a sweet biscuit, any of my sourdough cobblers, so I have a blueberry cobbler, and a pumpkin cobbler, you can use your sourdough discard in those recipes as well. So I hope that this list has encouraged you. If you are on the fence about making a sourdough starter, but you really don't like the idea of throwing any flour away, try some of these recipes. Or if you just get too much sourdough starter going and you need to use some so that you're not running out of your house with sourdough starter, this is a great way to use that up. If you are brand new to sourdough, Make sure to check out a few of my videos. I have a couple of Q and A's on my YouTube channel, which I'll link down below so that you can learn all of the reasons why you would want a sourdough starter and how you can start one. And then some of the most frequently asked questions and problems. I get asked so many questions on Instagram that I actually started a story highlight with sourdough FAQs so that you can access all of those because I'm getting a lot of times the same questions over and over again, and this is just an easy way to access it. So tons of resources here in my channel and on the Farmhouse on Boone blog if you do wanna get into sourdough. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this video. If you're brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two videos every week on food from scratch, natural living and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse.